go. Hello. Okay, I'm back um, to do the shading. I did a few changes. I fixed a few things while standing in front of it so I could see it well. And I flattened that space so you can see that that shading, this is going to be pushed back in the shading point part. And that there's a two-tone shadow back here behind the pot. Um, so I'm, I've got my charcoal and I've got a couple of different... Um, drying surfaces for rubbing. I've got my Kleenex, my paper towel, and my eraser. I don't have my kneaded eraser. I cannot find it in this studio, so I gave up. I'm just going to go. We're going to go without it. Um, and then if I need a sharp edge, I'll just use a sheet of paper because I forgot my sharp edges. Sometimes I like a machine tool edge with you. I've shown you to get a nice straight line because I'm not really good with lines. I tend to lose them. I lost my hair. I lost my pencil out of my hair again. So let's get that back in there. All right. Now let's see. We're going to look at this again. We got to darken this, darken this, darken this. But what we're going to work on first, what I like to do, uh, almost like a landscape painter, I like to draw shade in the darkest, the farthest back, the simplest stuff first. So I'm going to shade around this object, especially up back here. A um, little bit down here, but we'll go back to that after. Only because I, if I get it, if I get it the right tone with the charcoal, I don't have to go back. I can lay every all of my marks over top of it. I've got a piece of uh, a charcoal. I'm just lightly dragging it. I'm going to mix it in with what I have of vine. The vine will work a little bit to help me tone, um, and it'll also possibly lose a lot of its um, life to this charcoal. I don't mind using my hands. If you don't like, you can use anything you want to, sh to shade. I don't mind sh rubbing and getting dirty. Uh, it's what I prefer. Professor Gundor, who was my instructor, hated it. He used to give me Kleenexes and paper towels and tell me not to rub with my hands, but I, it's still, to me, it's like, it's almost like pottery. I love pushing the, the charcoal with my hands. So I'm going to darken this back here. There's a nice cast shadow right behind that um, bowl when it hits this pot. And wherever I'm starting to lose the pot because I overlapped, I can just take my eraser out of my hair. And this is just a, an eraser I stuck on a pencil that I get at the dollar store in a package of 40 for kids to put on their erasers when you use them down. They work great as a drawing tool, inexpensive. Our supplies can be expensive, but if you get them at the dollar store, that's great. You want this to be a little darker than back here, but um, but not a real sharp edge. Just everything back here right now is going to have a soft edge until it hits this pot. Because you, you want it to just exist softer because it's behind, and that's a part of um, is atmosphere. And also one point perspective, uh, perspective where if it's further back, it's less defined. Okay, so let's see. I darkened it right here because again, there is this nice little, almost like trapped shadow um, between the pot and the fabric and the wall. In here, even though it's open, I'm going to have to shade it to be part of that wall. And then this is darker here. This is where I start to get, this is the, the implied plane line across the drawing. It's right about here. And so that's where that will get a little bit darker because that's your plane line to indicate background space and uh, table space that the objects sit on. I want a nice sharp edge right here along this pot. And I'm going to start shading out. I want some inconsistency in this shade shadow because this is fabric, not, not metal pot. So I'm actually going to take my paper towel and remove some of the charcoal and leave it so that it's not the same as the pot. I specifically don't want it to be exactly like the pot. It's a different material. It's a different surface. And I want to indicate that. That's my darker this is my darker shadow. You've seen this on the eggs where there's multiple shadows. That's my darkest one. And now this is my second lead. 
lighter shadow as it comes here. And I might actually, for sake of difference, allow that to just sit there almost unfinished. I kind of like that. There is a slightly darker element right here. And while I'm here, I might as well try, um, I might as well try just pulling it in. There you go. And I'm going to step back and say for my background space, I'm happy with that. We can always make modifications later. Now over here, <clears throat> this is where my light source is. So, um, so this, I can probably just use the dirt of my hands to start to create kind of a nice little transition here. There's a, sh there is a shadow caught here because of the fabric fold. I don't want a lot. I just want a little bit. I don't want to leave it just white because then it looks like I forgot it. Um, here is another, this is another shadow from more of the fabric moving and the light source moving. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of dirt from my hands and soften that up there. This, as I said, is the plain line that these objects are sitting on. So I'm going to suggest that plain line with the dirt from my hand. Get it darker. Actually put some charcoal right on my hand. Get it darker. And allow that to exist there. Indicate it. I dropped my pencil out of my hair. You probably saw that. But I've got another one in my pocket. I want to suggest that there. And then here, yeah, it's a beautiful snowy day right now. And then in here, remember, I told you this is more this, this, and this are probably three of the darkest parts in the whole drawing. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to jump in there and do it. Make it nice and dark. Now, all of a sudden, it has this really bright light right there. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to come back in and erase a little more. That's good. And then um, there's this is also a little bit. And I'm just going to take some charcoal on my thumb and draw that. It's in some more of a shadow of the fabric fold. And that's all I'm probably going to do there. And that I'll finish at the end because if I do too much detail, I'll hit it with my arms or my hands and I'll rub it out of existence. So I'm happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that as a background. And we might go into a little more definition here. Um, and again, when we're done, we may step back and say we don't need it. All right, so now let's see. I think I'm going to work on this pot. I'm going to go continue to go in with my charcoal. And I'm going to go into the darkest dark, which is inside the pot. This handle inside the pot. Outside is lighter. So I'm just going to go in. And follow the map I made for myself in Vine. I'm going to take the edge of the charcoal and drag it along my contour edge. Using my contour edge as my guide. When I don't do it right, I can go back in. Always go back in with your erasers and clean up. That's what they're there for. They're great. There's all kinds of erasers you can use. to, um, And they're great tools. And I'm just going to, right now, before I, start sh um, before I start shading and moving it around with my hands or with my uh, paper towel, I'm just going to start applying the tone just by dragging it and see what I get and see how much rubbing I actually end up having to do. Some people are actually so good with charcoal that they don't end up needing to do a lot of rubbing. I had a... a um, James Kane was his name. He was a really good art artist. He's a really good painter, and he likes to he liked to draw with charcoal by just this, by actually pulling and being so sensitive to the charcoal that he never he never rubbed. He just built up the charcoal in layers, and it's, it, they were beautiful when he was done. They shimmered and they glowed and they were just amazing. He lives here in Pittsfield. All right. Let's get in here and get dark. Now remember, this is really dark because it's disappearing under, but I have to be careful of that edge. And I'm trying to stay out of your way so you can see what I'm doing. I have a little bit of light source there, so I'm going to drag it along there. 
this is good, good. And now I gotta step back to see if what I've got is good and I can go outside. Oh, I like that so far. I'm gonna leave that. Well, actually, no, I'm gonna get the detail done to show you how you can do that. Um, so now I've got my light sources pretty set. This is my brightest light source, secondary light source, and a lighter, and an even more faded light source. And again, this is inside the pot, so it's very black. So what I'm going to do is I need to add even more charcoal in here as I rub down. Yes. And this is an intense dark here, so I want to rub that down and start to smooth out and smooth out. Now, when we get to that lip right here, I don't have to one in my hair. When we get to this lip, I need to nice, clean edge. So I'm going to go back and clean that edge. Here, I'm going to, I've am going i got a line and an edge, and I'm going to soften that line before I go any further and blur it. Because I'm not even sure how much. It's, it may just be all light right there. And then we're going to slightly get in here and start to shade. Now, I'm trying to control the shape of the shadow and the amount of light, which will indicate, once you step back, the, the, your, um, you have cones and rods in your eyes. Cones see color, rods see light and dark and fast movement. So when you're charcoal drawing, the uh, cones are what's being activated more than the uh, no, uh, rods. Sorry, the, the backwards. The, Rods are being activated as much as the cones, which is what you do when you're driving at night or when you're driving in low light. You're really becoming accustomed to seeing the shadows, the lights, and the darks. And you will get better at it as you do it over time. This is a subtle change here. So I'm going to just, just with the dirt on my finger, I'm going to subtly push that around. I'm going to make sure I have a really sharp black right there, a really sharp black right there. And then all of these light sources fade into a sharp black here because they're going to go behind this bright lid of this pot. So let me get moving so that I don't keep you here too long. I don't like my, I don't like my um, sections of video to go over half an hour. If you do, even... It, you just your eyes are going to glare over and I'm going to lose you because I get lost in, in, in talks and stuff after half an hour. If it's not really like, oh, my God, this is so exciting. You kind of go, I need a break. I need to go get a drink. Got 15 so minutes. I'm going to I um, I try to keep it to a half an hour at the most for drawing sessions. And then you get up and you take a break and you move around. All right. Now this this pot, this part has to go. And again, like we did when we um, when we were shading the egg, if you want this to be seen round, you want to push the charcoal. I want this to be seen in, so I want to push the charcoal to appear both down and round. So I'm going to push the charcoal to go this way, this way, this way, and this charcoal to go this way, so that I can appear, so that the lines or the marks of your hand push the viewer's eye to go the way you want. You're in control of their vision. Okay, so let's step back. Okay, I'm very happy with that. So far, that's kind of nice. This is a little too dark, too bright. I'm going to soften it a little here. I'm going to soften. I'm going to pull in the edge, but I'm not going to pull it in as a line. I'm going to pull it in as a little bit of a shadow. I'm actually quite happy with that. Now I'm going to go down and start to shade the lights and darks that are reflected in this um, metal pot. They're all going to be lighter than up here. The only part that's this dark is maybe a little bit here, a little bit here, and that handle. Okay. Um, let's start. This one I drew as a half circle because this is a very bright. What we have to actually do right now is remove these lines. They're not necessary. They're, they're, they were for, for um, defining that my um, handles were in this the right, right spot. So I'm going to take that out of there. Because this is a very bright section of the pot. I'm going to take the dirt on my hands. 
and it can't stay the weight of the paper, um, even though it's very light, the only spots that are going to stay light, the light of the paper, are the brightest, brightest, and if they still don't seem bright enough for you, we do have white in our kit, you can add white in. We'll see when we get towards the end if we need to add white to this. Um, so, but I'm just using the dirt on my hand to create just a nice tone. I want to actually soften it even, so I'm going to hit it with my paper towel. Now, on this side of it, there is a really dark, dark line that comes down. It comes under the pot top. And the top of the pot actually is lighter. So let me get in here and lighten that up. This is it. This is lighter. Let me redefine this. I have to do it with my charcoal. There we go. Good. So now under here, it's going to get darker. There's a nice dark line right there. And then this whole thing is darker. And it's a half circle. It's kind of beautiful. Half circle shadow, a reflected shadow actually, and we're going to sh sh sharply do that, sharply do this, and then we're going to go around to try to keep that smoothness going that way, so we're still creating a rounded pot with elements on it. Okay, all right, I'm going to get moving, so I'm not taking too long. But I'm happy with that. This is going to get a little darker. This is pretty dark right there. All right. And this needs to get a little sharper. And then this can just be a little bit. We just want a little bit of, again, mush on our fingers, a little bit of dirt on our fingers. It's great. I'm happy with that. These are those, um, these are those reflected elements that are down here as fabric. These are those reflected elements of fabric. I want them very soft, so I may go in with my um, pencil eraser and kill that line so it looks more like a, a smushy. And then I may just go in and kind of smush it out, which I do like that, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to go this way with it. At first, I'm going to erase and break up that line and then go back in. With this the dirt on my hands and try to suggest that movement of the, that reflected movement of the paper. There is some, some element of the pot very lightly going to start to suggest that. And the pot's been used for years to cook pasta, so it's got, got, it's got some burn, it's got some dark elements. I'm running behind. My husband just told me I had 10 minutes. So I'm going to be quiet and draw fast. All right. Okay, you can see that I'm trying to recreate, again, another, I think it's, this is the actual reflection of the bowl in here. And it does an interesting light dark thing. So I'm trying to create that. And there is an actual dark reflected element right here. Which I need to get in there. And then this is the edge of the pot. And it needs to be allowed to come this way. So I'm going to just pull it this way. You can see that. But I also have a light source happening here. So I'm going to go back in and pull that light source back. And with metal, you kind of want sharp, sharp um, breaks in the light and the darks. The sh and that is usually a, a way that you know that it's a shiny reflective surface. With the glass, it was semi-transparent thin light shadows. This is gonna be a much darker, more demanding shadow. This one is going to go behind, so it's actually going to make the pot partially disappear. 
into this shadow. So you don't want it to completely disappear, but you do want it to give to that surface enough. So if you need to do something, you can always darken the background. There you go. I like that, actually. There is a half circle showing up somewhere very dark here. Not sure where it's coming from, but I like it, so we're going to use it. Um, this is darker because of the handle's here, so we're going to pull it down and allow it to be dark. This actually does a really cool, goes straight down and curls like that. And then it's darker here, so we're going to try to create that. reflected light so I'm going to pull that back there we go now I'm going to quickly get this handle in the handle is pretty much all dark with very little lights the inside of this handle is quite dark so I'm just going to go in full, full push charcoal hard and try to get that in there then I'm going to drag it across the top pushing closer and heavier when I find where I want my darks. And then the handle on the side here, as it disappears into the pot, is pretty dark too. This is where at any point when you need to create a nice sharp edge, you might want to go back in with your charcoal pencil to really create a nice edge. And I can show you that right now. My charcoal pencil here. My charcoal pencil is kind of getting really small. It's kind of actually having a problem. It's got a little bit of a broken edge, but I think I can make it work. You can just get in there and really define it. And it will help you define that edge. And then the charcoal pencil tends not to smudge as much as the, um, the charcoal stick. So sometimes that helps you control if your edges are smudging a little much on you. But don't try to do the whole drawing with the charcoal pencil because you will be there all day. Um, we have a large surface on purpose to make you be more gestural and to make you be really, in a sense, more what we would call as artist painterly. Charcoal is the closest um, drawing style to painting. You can go directly from charcoal do a charcoal drawing on a good sheet of paper or a canvas, uh, spray it down and paint over it. And it works as a great surface. An artist by the name of Ivan Albright, um, that's how he did his, uh, his, his work. Okay. So there we go. The pot's almost done. We now just have to go back and attach some lights to this. lip that we have going on here. That may end up being in the detail. We may come back to that for the detail. Now if I can quickly shade this um, drawing, otherwise the next drawing will be the completion of the bowl. The next video will be the completion of the bowl and um, detail. Okay. These drawings are getting more complicated so it is taking three half hour videos to get them completed. Okay. Take as much time as you need in your drawings. I don't normally do a drawing in just an hour and a half. I tend to take sometimes days, sometimes with my big drawings of um, graphite and charcoal, I can sometimes take weeks, but you know, you don't have to take weeks, but you would take as much time as you need during the week to get these drawings done to your satisfactory completion okay so this is inside the bowl again like that it is where we are at our darkest i want to go back before i go any further and lighten parts of this back up because i feel like i'm losing it that's better now this is that inner lip that reflects this 
This is the handle. Believe it or not, the handle um, inside is brighter than that dark space trapped in that bowl. So that's the actual handle. I hope it worked. I'll have to step back after. All right, now let's shade this bowl, see if we can get it done before I have to end this video. We're gonna, I'm going to push harder here. Push a little bit harder here. Again, we're following the pattern uh, on the map we made with our graphite, with our, um, our not our graphite, our um, vine. Charcoal. Now I'm going to get in there and I'm going to try shading this pretty quickly. Ready? Go. And I'm going to go round. Yeah. Three and minutes. I'm going to go round because I want this bowl to appear round. Let's do this with our eggs. So go back and fix that. Go back in. There you go. That's better. Um, here, I need, before I lose it, I need to reestablish a bright light on that lip of that bowl. So pull that back like that. That works. Um, this is going to get a little darker under here. So I'm going to let that just fade in there just a little bit. We'll play with it after. This, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to get in there and fade it a little bit. Then we're going to clean up this edge right here. Yeah, that's it. And then I like that. Do I like that? That's good. I like... We're down to one minute. Right. I like this. I want this to come down. I need to indicate that surface. I need to indicate this being rounder, that's better, and rounder, and before I lose my bowl, and i got to come to an end for this try, let me just find the edge of my bowl. See how I lose the shape of things and I pull them back? I lose the shape, I pull them back. There's no right or wrong, it's just getting the whole thing to work for you at the end of your drawing. You've got what you're looking for. You're trying to understand how to make the charcoal behave um, and how to manipulate and get the cast shadows that you see and that you can control the charcoal. All right. So we're going to step back and say this is done for now. All right. So this is a basic drawing. And what we're going to come back in our final, uh, it hopefully won't even be 30 minutes, um, we'll just do a little bit of shading. And